next speaker is a paper called Probabilistic Palm Rejection Using Spatial Temporal Touch Features and Iterative Classification. And Julia Schwartz will begin her presentation. Okay, thanks, Dan. So when we're writing, it's really great to be able to rest our hands on a surface. But unfortunately, this isn't really possible on many touchscreen devices because most touchscreens can't really distinguish between unintentional palm touches and intentional stylus or finger touches. And while hardware solutions do exist to this problem, it would be really great if we could, in software, distinguish between unintentional palm inputs and intentional stylus or finger inputs without requiring any sort of additional hardware or special patents. So people have tried various approaches to this, including identifying palm regions from a camera image, or having an area to rest one's palm where all input is ignored. More sophisticated geometric models are also possible. And several commercial applications actually do implement some sort of palm rejection, but all the ones that we reviewed actually require the user to define their handiness or specify their handwriting codes. And while, of course, these implementations aren't publicly available, um, this suggests that these guys are using a heuristic approach. So rather than using heuristics, our approach actually leverages a collection of machine learning models trained on features that describe how a given touch and the points around it actually change over time. And the advantage of this is that it's agnostic to handedness and device orientation, and doesn't require any sort of special calibration. So here's a video of our algorithm actually running, and we can see that I can write in the word hello on the screen, and when I lift my hand, there are no other touches. Interestingly, as I drag my palm along the screen, you can actually see some uh, strokes appearing and then disappearing later, and we'll get to that. So to explain how this actually works, let's look at what the touch screen sees as I write hello on my screen. So here's a recording of the actual touch events, and for clarity, I've labeled the palm touches as blue and the stylus is labeled as green. So a couple things sort of pop out here. First, palms tend to have a fairly large touch radius. Also, the palms tend to flicker in and out while the stylus sort of appears consistently. And while the palms are sort of tend to be clustered together because the touch driver is trying to break it up into smaller touches, the stylus tends to be a bit more isolated. Also, while the palms don't move very much, styluses tend to have these longer, smoother trajectories. So from this, we actually took these features and uh, uh, used them to develop features. So to explain this, I want to go through an example. So let's say we have the following set of touches on the screen, and a new one appears and we wish to figure out whether it's a palm or a stylus. So let's call this t equals zero. So right away, there are already a couple features that kind of pop out at us. We can look at the, the radius of the touch and the distance to other touches on the screen. And what most people would do is they'd probably just build a couple more features and build a classifier right there. But actually what we found is that you can do much better if you wait a bit and look at how these touches change over time. In particular, if you look at a sequence of touch frames, you can actually statistics over, for example, how the radius evolves over time, and how the distance to other touches on the screen also change. And you can also get things like velocity and acceleration. And one interesting thing that we found is actually you can do even better if you look at the touches on the screen slightly before the touch occurred. And the reason for that is because you have these flickering palm touches, so when your initial touch down occurs, you actually might not have any palms on the screen. So you might have to look back a little bit to get more so using these features and a few others described in the paper, we then trained a series of decision trees using these, um, these, a sequence of increasingly larger touch windows. So as you might expect, the longer you wait, the higher your accuracy. So this chart here shows the, the classification accuracy as the time window over which you examine the touches increases. So right away when you, when you touch the screen, you already get an accuracy of about 98.5%, but this actually isn't good enough. And that's because you're getting a lot of touches per second when you have these palms on the screen. However, if we wait a quarter of a second, we can actually cut our error rate by about 70%. And waiting longer doesn't really get you that much more. So we've got these uh, two competing desires. On the one hand, we'd like to sort of wait for about a quarter of a second before classifying, but also we want to provide immediate feedback to the user as they're drawing on the screen. So how do we do both of these? Well, when we touch down, we actually perform an initial guess and show feedback to the user accordingly. Then as the touch evolves, we actually reclassify every 50 milliseconds using decision trees obviously trained on successively larger uh, touch windows. And each of these classifiers then casts a vote. And finally, after about a quarter of a second, we 
the stock classification and take the majority vote. And so what this allows us to do is it actually allows us to correct an initially wrong guess. So actually to show you this, I wanted to go ahead and do a live demo here. So let's see how that goes. Um, hello, everybody. Let me see if I can full screen that. OK, great. So let's go to my iPad here. Um, so here we have a, our actual power rejection application running. Um, so I, you can see that when I you know, write on the screen, I can write the word hi. And then as I raise my palm, there are no touches on the screen. So I can also sort of change my orientation, and similarly, and um, write with my finger. Um, folks are welcome to come up and try this later if they want. And I can sort of smear my hand across the screen. You can see how uh, the application is actually rendering touches on the screen because it's classifying with strokes. But then afterward, it's refining that to, and removing the classification because it detects it as a bomb. OK. Let's go back to the presentation. All right, so to actually see how well this worked, we actually compared this demo that I just showed you to two um, leading sketching applications on the iPad made by major corporations. So we looked at Evernote, uh, Penultimate made by Evernote, and Bamboo Paper, which is made by Wacom. And so what we did is we had um, 10 participants draw a series of shapes using each of these applications. And importantly, we actually gave them zero training. We just told them to write these shapes as you would on a piece of paper. And we measured two things. So first, we measured false negatives. That is, when you draw a stroke on the screen and the, the stylus stroke actually disappears because the stroke gets misclassified as a palm. So from this, we can compute the true positive rate. In other words, the percentage of strokes that were correctly detected on the screen. So our, our approach is um, on the right here, and you can see that it does about as well as damage at around 98% of the pen strokes being correctly identified. We also counted um, the number of palm touches that were mislabeled as strokes. So what that looks like is when you're writing on the screen and you lift your palm, you actually see these splotches, which are really unpleasant. So here you can actually see the false positive rate um, normalized by the total number of strokes that the user has to write. Think of it as errors per stroke on the screen. And here, what's really interesting is you can actually see that our approach, which is again on the right, um, is dramatically, uh, offers a dramatically lower uh, false positive rate than the other approaches. So in summary, we have a much lower false positive rate and a fairly high true positive rate compared to these other applications. So to summarize, I think the, the real key behind the success of this algorithm is not actually the touch features, but rather that we looked at how these touches evolved over time. And also, rather than using heuristics, we actually use a classifier, which allows us to abstract away a lot of these per-user and per-device complexities. And finally, the little feedback trick I showed you highlights the needs for systems that can actually show immediate feedback to the user and then retract it as input gets refined. Um, this is something that's fairly easy to implement, sort of custom for a drawing application, but for something where you have a lot of widgets, um, can actually be very complicated. Um, interestingly, that's uh, this sort of system for rendering feedback and then retracting it later is actually the topic of my PhD thesis. And I'll be graduating this summer, and I'd love to, love to talk to folks more about this or palm rejection or anything recognition related. Thanks. Does your does that algorithm allow for uh, if you can reject it, can you turn it into other events like smearing? If that was like a, if, you know, it's a drawing and it's smearing. Um. Sorry, can you, it, I'm it, not sure I understand the question. Can you differentiate between both, uh, if it can reject it, can it also turn that uh, palm event into a different feature, like smearing? Um, that's a really interesting question, uh, in particular because I have another technology that, that uh, actually we have a really great demo that's, um, that's based off another technology that does actually implement smearing. Um, I assume that you could definitely, you know, um, certainly classify those columns and have them do like a smearing interaction, of course. Hello? Oh. Um, when you were gathering all the data to build your model, did you actually pull directly from the digitizer, or was everything still processed through the OS? It was, we were getting the touch points, so it wasn't directly from the digitizer. Um, yeah, you could probably, my, I imagine, I'm thinking of doing this, uh, you probably, well, I mean, to, Touchscreen companies like Synaptics, they're, they're already trying to do palm rejection on there, which is why you see a lot of that flickering happening. But yeah, we pulled it, uh, we just got the touch events. We, we got the location and the radius of touches. Did you try anything other than an iPad? Yeah, actually, I have implemented this on the Android. One interesting thing is that, um, that I didn't mention the talk because I didn't have time, but the, the, the radius of the touch is 
obviously the most important thing when you're doing harm reduction. Some, and the Android devices, um, the resolution of this radius is, is not usually as high, so um, it, it can definitely impact the accuracy, but I, I have it running on um, Galaxy Note. Uh, in fact, I focus on uh, the status tip versus palm. Is it because that's a more common problem, or is it because that's also better defined than, relatively speaking, between two kinds of classes? Um, are, you, are you asking why do we focus on status versus finger, for example? Right. Um, I think that, well, actually, um, we focus on status because. Um, Mostly because we, were, we wanted to focus on drawing, and in fact, um, we didn't actually. So yeah, we we, did, we define it as a more common problem. But actually, one of the things we've been trying to do is also get it to work with multi-touch gestures, so that you can descend and you can draw from, for example, zooming gestures. Also, but you haven't uh, done that. Already. Not for this one. Great. Let's thank our speaker. So the last paper of the session is